may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer quest in the bottom. Hope everybody's having a pleasant Saturday. It's cold and chilly here. Definitely was hoping we'd be raptured before this junk hit. I don't do winter anymore, people. I don't do cold. And I would live in Florida, but Kim and her husband have made it known to me that I would be miserable there too because it's so flipping hot. Oh, I can't wait to get to heaven with perfect temperature because I can't deal with too much heat and too much cold. Ain't it crazy? And my allergies are just killing me, literally. Because I can't get away from that because literally I have to burn the wood through the winter. So I can't get away from that. I'm allergic to about every tree known to man. And I love trees. Go figure. To those people who want to stay here, oh, I'll never understand it. Literally. But besides that, I want to appreciate, I appreciate everybody that's bought me coffees and the super stickers this weekend, the last couple of days. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for that. We want to talk about the hostage situations. Now, Lisa Boyce did an a earlier video on this. And we discussed this earlier yesterday in the earlier video that... Lucifer is going to try to turn more opinion against Israel. It's already beginning. And as of today, these are these hostages today, they've had some issues with trying to get them released. As we figured, Hamas would do her the thing that we thought they would do. They would try to mess this up every which way they could, and they have. Now, yesterday, what nobody reported, these people that are protesting for these people all over the world, how great the Palestinians are, they attacked the vehicle with the hostages in it. Now, these are the people in Palestine. This is not Hamas. These are the Palestinians that everybody says, oh, they don't want to hurt the Israelis. They attacked the cars, the convoys, when they was going out. News didn't cover that, of course not. You see, the news, I've watched Sky News and all these other people, they portray the, the Palestinians as the poor people that God help them, and they're not good people, Okay. There's a lot of bad people there, and Israel knows it. That's why this all happened. These people, these news people, literally support these people who took babies and put them in stoves and baked them and try to turn people's opinion that they're the good guys, just like we've said. The good guys are bad, and the bad guys are good. That's what's happening everywhere. It's happening in the United States also. They turn, if you're a good person, you're a patriot, you love the country, you love God, you're evil, and you're a terrorist. They're doing it with everything. And who is that? That is Lucifer. And if you watch what he's doing, you understand it. That's why I tell you to keep your eyes open. Now, this morning when I woke up, I had a very quick vision. It was quick. Now, I don't know what was happening. But I saw a major event happen, and everybody was running to their TVs. Reminded me of 9-11, to be honest with you. You remember that, when everybody was like running to their TVs, and everybody was watching it the whole time? That's what I saw. And I kept asking people, what's going on? What's going on? What's everybody running to? And they wouldn't tell me. And I remember the news anchor. Now, this is exactly how I saw World War III between Russia, Ukraine, United States, and Belarus. Same way. Newscast. I was watching it like in real time, and it happened again. But it happened this morning when I woke up. And it was very clear. I mean, I saw the people running like crazy to get to TVs to see what just happened. It was a major event, just like 9-11. Don't know what it means, but I know I had it this morning. And God, I don't think God would have showed it to me unless it was pretty close by, whatever it's going to be. 
So I don't know what it means, but I know everybody was running to their TVs and they couldn't get peeled away from it. Now, one of the news anchors was talking about something about a political figure. I don't know if one died or it was talking about who was in on this and all this stuff. I don't know. That part was scrambled to me. I don't think that was the important part. The important part was something big is about to happen, which we all know that by what's happening in Israel. We know it's only a matter of time. There was more earthquakes yesterday. We didn't even cover that, but there was a major earthquake on the Pacific Ocean that rose sea level huge. Now, luckily, nobody on the West Coast was affected. Didn't bring it up, but this was a massive wave. I mean, massive. I mean, a hundred footer, literally. That's how big this wave was. And it was from a volcano, of course, that erupted on the Pacific southern part, not southern of Japan, but south, kind of in between Taiwan and Japan. A volcano erupted. This wave was massive. And luckily, it did not take a, a lot of people's lives on the west coast and towards Japan and Taiwan and places like that because this was massive. I also saw China last night. Now, I haven't dreamed about China, but I'm wondering maybe if it's where I was talking about the China thing yesterday. So I've kept it in my mind, but I did see a lot of new things that was going on in China in one of my dreams also. That it was something to do with America and China, and it wasn't working out very well. And it seemed like it was an embargo. That's what it looked like to me in the dream. It was a major embargo of China and America that just started. So these are two events that I guess God has pointed me to that may possibly come to pass very soon. So we'll keep our eyes open on it. Now, with all this, and I know people don't like dreams and stuff like that, but they come to pass, people. They always do in some way or form. God gives us markers and things to see. And I know the difference between them and the others. And I know what I have to report from them and what I don't. And these are the two things that I know stood out in those. So, with all this and what's happening with Hamas, and also, let's don't forget, I wanted want to bring this up. It's very important, very important. Also, what happened to, they seized another ship, another cargo ship. And I've told you how big that is. When they start seizing ships and they just they dis, disrupt what we know is the shipping lanes around the world. And that is a major port there coming out. So all these goods that are supposed to be going to these other countries have now ceased. Every, the last time this happened was World War II on this kind of scale, seizing these kind of ships like this. You can't start seizing ships and not cause a world war. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work. And we already know it's coming. This is just another indicator of everything that's coming. These are huge ships, and I'll tell you what's going to happen. If they seize two or three of these, if they, they're already being successful here. And this is the guys from Yemen, the Houthi rebels. If they start sinking them instead of seizing them, and I think that's next, and then they start sinking ships in the Persian Gulf, you're going to see everything. I'm talking gas, diesel, anything towards Christmas. Prices are going to skyrocket like you've never seen and I know it's coming and I've warned of it many times that I have a real bad feeling that that this these ships are the key they really are and when all this stuff goes down this is what's going to truly turn the world against Israel I know that sounds crazy but I believe that is going to be the wrecking point but I believe we will be gone somewhere in that time I've read Amos 8 and 9, and I'm telling you, we disappear somewhere in here in this time period towards, because, I mean, it talks about Gaza, all that stuff's there. And then we disappear, and then the Psalms 83 war will take place. And that war will be ended very quickly. In one day, I think, possibly from what I understand from Scripture, Psalms 83 war will be ended in one day. All of them, including Saudi Arabia, even her friends that she has right now, and I'm talking about Israel, they will all have the pressure to go after Israel. Something's going to cause it. We just don't know what it is yet. But something turns every single one of them against them. 
and then they will all swarm Israel and God himself, not Israel's armies, not their iron dome, not their iron laser. They will never put up the first shot. God will destroy all the Arab nations in one whack. That's right. All their planes, all their ships, all their tanks will be destroyed instantly by God supernaturally. They won't even know what hit them. They don't serve the right God. Their God's not real. There's one God, and he is the one that's protecting Israel. They serve a cube, which is very disturbing in a lot of ways. And that's not God. Okay? You got to be careful in these moments because a lot of people are picking the wrong sides. Do not pick the wrong side at this very moment. Now, there was another story came out late last night. I'm following up on it about a new AI called Q. Now, this AI that they're about to release upon the world is the most intelligent AI ever created by man. It's 10 times smarter than any man. And it's been warned about the people, that actually the creators of it, have warned people about it. They have. They've warned people about not letting this thing loose. But Google has decided to let it loose. And I believe this could be part of all this stuff too. Also, what's coming down the pike of the Antichrist, the false witness, and the image of the beast could be this AI system. This thing's already thinking on its own. Just like Skynet and the Terminator movies, you can't make it up. But it's already, the guy who created it has warned everybody that it was already asking questions it shouldn't be asking. Why does it feel? Why does it alarm? It's already asking those kind of questions. It's already, it's become sentient. Sentient, I guess that's how you say it. Sentient, yeah. And it's, it's aware. Mankind's fear that they would create something like that has already, but the thing is they didn't create it. Satan did. Satan helped them create this thing because it's going to play a major role once we're gone. And that is the system that's going to do it. It's called Q. Strange name. If you're a Star Trek fan, you will think of Q, the one who claimed he thought he was a god. It's funny they named it after that. And he, it was all intelligent. He was light years intelligent more than anybody else. And a total nuisance. Chaos. Kind of like if you go into the Viking mythology. Loki, the god of chaos. So that's what they named this thing after. It's Q. Not coincidence by any means. There's no coincidence anymore. Because the rapture is this close. So we've got to pay attention to these things. Like I said. So as many seeds be outside think outside the box in these moments because we got to do our job before we get out of here thing is we might be out here tonight the way things are going i'm telling you every day that i come on here it's escalated more and the birth pains ain't quitting just this morning more volcanoes erupted more earthquake. i mean it's just it's everywhere it's just pure chaos out there now sunspots come out of nowhere massive ones i mean you can't make this stuff up. I wish I could. But when you're watching the birth pains, it's like nothing I've ever seen. And it's not diminished. Yeah, I, would th I thought, well, maybe with this ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, it would start to, you know, basically die down a little bit. No, no, it's just good. It's just ramping up. That's all it's doing. So we have to be aware of it, that we are still on a ticking clock and we are leaving. I've told you that. No fear. There's a lot of things happening, just like with all the stuff in China right now. A new virus that mysteriously shows up. After Bill Gates and his foundations talked about this eight months ago, released a video of this same virus that they're talking about right now, only attacking children. <laughs> How coincidence is that? Every time they release a video, that virus shows up six to eight months later. Every time. And nobody ever asks us that question. Why? Are they good at, are they have a crystal ball? Makes you think. And I'm not a conspiracy theory, theorist person either. But I just think it's ironic that every time, I was just talking to Bonnie McCoy about this six months ago. 
I said, now, if we watch six, seven months ago and this virus that they just talked about comes out, I know something's up. And it did. Exactly. And once again, in China, and it's attacking kids just like they said it would. This went right after kids giving them pneumonia like they've never seen. It's a, another strain of pneumonia, kind of like that. You know what? And it's attacking the children there. But the adults seem to be fine, but it's attacking the kids. So, you can't make this stuff up. I, I hate to tell you. We live in a very evil world, and it is not going to be better. There is nobody coming to fix it but Jesus himself. We will be leaving soon. Very soon. I highly doubt any of us making a Christmas, to be honest with you, the way that things are going. I really do. I'm surprised we're still here in Thanksgiving. I want to be off this evil planet because these people, they're only their plans are just pure evil. And you're in the way, and I am also. All these people, the, the evil has taken over this world, and there is no stopping it now. Only Jesus and the rapture can get us out of here and let the tribulation take its course. Because that's what's coming. The tribulation is what you would call the the cleaning system of this planet, what God's going to use. It will clean the evil off the face of the earth. That's what the tribulation is. And in that term, Jacob's trouble, along with the tribulation, they will accept their Messiah. But that's what's coming. The tribulation is any moment. If you don't see it brewing and starting, you're blind. Israel was definitely, once October the 7th hit, the clock really started going quickly. There is no good, there's no good outcome of this. There is none. The only good outcome of what happened to Israel is us leaving. But I promise you as I'm sitting here, when October 7th hit, that was our ending. That's when it's really started on our final days here. Mark it down, 100%. That incident over there, it may calm down in moments, and it might even cease in one moment, but nothing's good's going to come from it. I'm telling you, because the Bible tells us so. This will, this, what happened in Gaza, and what's happening with Hezbollah, and Iran, and the Houthis there in Yemen, it's going to grow, and it's going to grow, and grow. It's not going to stop until the Psalm 83 starts. But we're gone in that time period. God has warned Israel <clears throat> they don't share that land. He's warned them. They're not to share that land. It's not the Palestinians. It's not the Arabs. It's their land. And he has warned the Israelis over and over, you can't live with them. And they still try to be, and everybody hates the Israel, says they're the bad guys, but they're the ones trying to live in peace with them. But there is no peace with them. There is none, and it never will be until Jesus comes back. But God's like, okay, fine. You won't get rid of them, I will. And that's, that's what's coming, people. That's what the scripture tells us. They will part the, I mean, just think about this. Some of these scriptures are so old, but it foretold that Israel would come back in 1948, and nobody paid attention to it. But that is the fig tree generation. That's when the countdown, the beginning of it started, of Jesus' return. But see, the church and Satan tries to teach you that we, we, was, we replaced them, and that's, not, that's a lie. Because he don't want you knowing that in 1948, the clock started ticking, and man's time was almost over. That's it, people. That's scripture. But people want to replace the Jews with themselves, and it's not going to happen. But Satan put that there so they would do that. And they, they took it hook, line, and sinker. I know people around here, they think all the scriptures for them is not. It's for the Jews. They can't separate the Jews between the church. That's because they can't rightfully divide. And they're just, they get the Bible all jumbled up, don't know how to read it, and it's a mess. Because nobody here, I mean, you cannot read the Bible without dispensations. Because it is dispensations. The Bible even tells you it's dispensations. But they ignore it. Because they work for Lucifer. And he's done it through the pulpit. By giving all this, it gets half the Christians completely lost. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to put the Bible with that. And they don't, the bottom line is they don't never ask Jesus. They go by what their church taught them, and that's it. That's the gospel, and they're more, they're smarter than God. That's how these people think. And you can't change them. It's easier to talk to somebody that's lost than it is somebody that's actually went to church 20 years and that they've got it 
they're not doing dispensational in the Bible. Now, you can be an over-dispensational, too. Can't do that either. But there is dispensations. We're in the dispensations of grace. There's a fine line you got to walk. The best way to do it is talk to Jesus and have him show you how to do it. That's what I asked. And he showed me dispensations. That's right. He's the one who led me to it. It wasn't man. It was him. So if he led me to it, that means there's dispensations. And that is where everybody's lost. They can't rightfully divide the Bible. And then the other thing is most people believe that our, their sins are not paid for. And they believe Jesus only paid for a couple of their sins and the rest of the sins he let go. Seriously, this is how people think. That's the ones that don't. They believe that your salvation can be taken away, which the Bible says it can't. But they'll keep teaching. Oh, that's nothing about it. They know it's in the Bible. They're not dumb. They know. You can't lose your salvation. Jesus never lets go of his. I'm sorry. It says in the Bible. He doesn't let go. Yeah, you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. Everybody sins. But God is already, Jesus already paid for all that on the cross. No, it don't give you a license to sin. But you got to understand, he died for all sins. All sins are paid for. They're gone. Past, present, and future. Not just your past. That's not what it says. It says he died for all sins ever to be ever committed. All of it. It's all gone. Now, if you accept the gift, and only through that gift, when you accept it, is your sins erased. But they're erased as soon as you accept that free gift. And you know which one I'm talking about. The blood. But see, the devil don't want you to. He wants you to think every time you do a boo-boo, you're going to go to hell. He wants you to live under the law. Because that's what that is. They're living under the Jewish law. We're not under the Jewish law. But Satan wants you to think so. That's why Jesus come and defeated the law and put an end to it. So you would not be in basically jail for the rest of your life and live in misery and fear. Once you truly understand what he did, and most Christians do not, they don't have a clue, and trust the blood of Jesus that he died, was buried, rose again on the third day, going to the scriptures, then when you truly get it, you're set free. You realize you're going to stumble and you're going to mess up. See, the ones that live under the law, they believe every time they do a boo-boo or things they have a hard time dealing with, that that's going to put them in hell. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus died on the cross for all sins. All of them's done. Finished. If you accept the gift, because see, when we go and people say, well, God, I tried to live the perfect life. When they say I the first time, he's going to say, I don't know you. It's not about you. It's about what he did on the cross. People just don't get it. They keep putting him back on the cross because the church tells them that, and that's what they believe. But see, once you know the truth, that Jesus paid for all sins, they're all gone. And then it, once you believe that, the Holy Spirit comes in you. because this is Now, this is the one line they always use. Well, that gives you a license to sin. The, the devil always uses that. He used that against Jesus, too, in the desert. He used stuff like that all the time. No, it don't. And we that have the Holy Spirit know how ignorant that is when you say that. When these people say that to me, I know they don't have the Holy Spirit and they're not saved. Automatically. As soon as they say that, I'm like, you might want to get saved. Because you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because once you have the Holy Spirit, it will beat the living tar out of you <laughs> trying to do bad stuff. You just you know you don't want to do bad stuff. And if you do mess up, you don't beat yourself to death, but the Holy Spirit's always there to remind you that's not what you're supposed to be doing. No, I don't give you a license to sin. But let me tell you something. If you think that you're going to heaven because you haven't sinned, you're going to hell. Because you're always going to sin. You're going to sin to the very end until Jesus comes and gets us. It's just these fleshly bodies, you will fight with that. It's not about the outside. See, you see people that teach you that there's no salvation. The salvation can be lost. But see, they only judge what's on the outside. They don't judge what's in here. See, they're people. They judge you. Oh, I seen you do that. Oh, he's going to hell. He's going to hell. You notice those? You see them on here in the comments all the time. God don't look out here. This is He sees what's inside. Because they don't understand what happened in the garden. See, in the garden, when Adam sinned and Eve, we become black inside once we're born. We was all destined to hell, basically. So we're all black inside. Jesus comes and corrects that on the cross. Then when you accept the gift... 
that you're always going to be a sinner. You're always going to come short. And you come as you are and you have to have him. Then you turn white inside. It's not on the outside. It's not what you do on the outside. It has nothing to do with it. Church teaches you the outside. The mega churches teach you the outside. They're teaching a the false gospel. They don't understand the story. Or they do, and they do it on purpose to keep you in bondage. Because you got people, we're at a point where the church is so corrupt. I watch them daily. I just watch them, and they will lie to people flat out. People will amen it because they don't know the scripture. That's why we're in the shape we're in. From the pulpit to people not reading scripture and believing every pastor that comes and goes. I believe God, not the pastors. I have come to find out these pastors lie almost 75%. Each one of them does. And they leave stuff out on purpose. And a lot of them are going to be left here because what they've done to God's sheep. I don't think he's, I don't think he's too happy. But that is happening everywhere. But you can't lose your salvation. The Bible tells us that. That's right. You can either trust Jesus or trust man. It's up to you. You can either be lost, stumble forever, and not figure out what's going on, or you can just ask Jesus yourself, and he'll take you to the Word. Don't take my opinion. Don't take any man's opinion. Ask Jesus. He'll take you there himself. Tell everybody that. That's how I did it, and thank God I did, because I really started realizing how much people lie, especially pastors. They lie a lot. And some of the biggest names, they absolutely leave stuff out. Leave it out to keep people under bondage, and I watch it daily. Some of the biggest names with the biggest crowds, and they purposely leave stuff out all the time. Quit listening to man, and ask God and read the scripture yourself, and find out the truth before it's too late. And I'm talking to those that are lost. If you believe on Jesus, what he did, you're saved. And you're ready to go home. I'm not talking to you. There's plenty of people out there that's sitting on the wall and not, literally, they're not picking a side. They're just trying to get by. And that's not going to work because the time of grace is coming to an end. Jesus loves his children and he's coming for them. That's right. You can get mad in the comments and everything else, but we're not going to tell you a bunch of stuff to keep you in bondage because you're not. Jesus sets you free. All you got to do is believe on the blood. That's what you've got to do. If you're going to believe anything and listen to anything I say, trust in the blood. Don't trust nothing else. That is the only thing you can trust. And then you're set free. And you're ready to go home. Don't listen to anybody else. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to always screw up and you're always going to mess up. Paul did all the way till he got to the day he, got, he died. And he said it himself. We wrestle with these flesh to the lat, the very end. Now, we do our best. We try our best. But we're always going to fail short. That's why Jesus did what he did. There is nobody going to get through heaven on their own merits. You're not going to make it. I have never done anything down here. Jesus did it all through me. And I have always failed and I always will fail. But I know I need Jesus. And I accepted it. The only way I can... I can go to heaven is through Jesus. There's nothing I can do to get there. I accepted. I came and said, Jesus, it was you. It ain't me. I know that I'm always going to fail, but I accept that you're my only way in. And when you do that, when you realize there's nothing you can do down here, and there isn't, only through his blood and what he did can you get in. Then you're truly saved. That's what the church don't want you to know. They want you to do it by works. It's about what the, you're the charitable to the donations to the church. That's the way to get in. And they do that on purpose. But that's, see, when you're truly saved, you're going to want to do that stuff because God's going to work through you to make you, to give you that, to want to do it. It's not you. It's Jesus doing it through you. That's what the devil don't want you to know. He wants you to live in fear. He wants you to have no hope, and we don't do that here. You have all the hope in the world. You have Jesus. There is nothing you can't do. You're unstoppable. If you put your mind to it and have faith and believe in him and thank him every day, you'll see your life prosper, and you'll be ready to leave this horrible, evil planet very soon. 
I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. We'll do another update tonight. We'll keep an eye on all these events that are taking place, including the hostage situation there, because it is definitely stinking of Satan at this moment. But I don't see or hear from you again. I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.